Okay, this is a demonstration um, concerning how to calculate a p-value <clears throat> and we're going to actually do it with the t-distribution because apparently a number of students are still having some difficulty. So let us um, take a sample problem. We are interested in determining whether or not uh, Starbucks managers or cafe managers are earning more than the national average. So we will see that in um, in 2008, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, mean salary for um, workers uh, in uh, cafe managers, sorry, nationally was about $43,000, right? We took a random sample of 10 Starbucks workers um, or Starbucks general managers uh, or we should say rather store managers to be a little more explicit a random sample of 10 of them and found the following information the average salary was $46,000 and I should make it clear that we're talking about money here with a standard deviation of $4,000 Okay, so now I'm going to ask you, if I were to ask the question, what is the probability that um, we could get in a random sample of 10 Starbucks managers is average salary of $46,000 or more, given that the mean is uh, $43,000, or if we believe it is $43,000. So the question would be, what's the probability of obtaining this sample mean greater than or equal to $46,000 given a sample size of 10, a mean of 43000 and a sample standard deviation of 4000 Now normally we don't write all that information in but I'm just repeating it here so that you understand the context of the problem. Now, if you notice, sigma is unknown. So sigma is unknown. Also, n is less than 30, is 10. So that should tell us right away that we should consider <coughs> using the um, t distribution. So we'd have to make a number of assumptions. What are some of those assumptions? Well, the assumptions, whenever we want to use the t-distribution, would include, one, the population is normal. Population normally distributed. Right. And then the sample is randomly chosen. Sample is randomly chosen. Okay, so for this problem, it's, not, it's, it's expected that we'll use the t-distribution. So let's draw our graph and see what we're looking at. Is a distribution and the mean is 43,000. Sample standard deviation is what we have is 4,000. And we want to know what's the probability of obtaining a sample mean of 48,000 or more. All right. So, I'm going to shade this in for you. This is what we're interested in. Because we're using the t-distribution then, we should use the following formula. t is equal to x bar minus mu s over root n. And then we know that this has degrees of freedom n minus 1 for a single sample problem. 
So let's substitute our values. T is equal to the sample mean was 48,000. The population mean we believe is 43,000. And then our sample standard deviation is 4,000. And we divide that by the square root of n, which is 10. <coughs> the t value turns out to be 3.16 when we do the division. Basically, what we're looking at is uh, 3,000 divided by 4,000 over the square root of 10, and that is 3.16. All right. Now, as you can see, that's three standard deviations, which is, uh, in fact, significant just by looking at it. But then again, the sample size is small. we got to go and figure out whether or not um, we have a small probability. So the probability of x bar being greater than or equal to 48,000 is the same or is equivalent to the probability that t is greater than 3.16. All right? And if we look up the t table, so this is where now we must look up our t table. What is our, we need our degrees of freedom, however. So I'm going to go back here and enter the degrees of freedom, which is 10 minus 1, which is 9. All right? So we have 9 degrees of freedom and a value, a t value of 3.16. So we go to the table. And let's see, I have a table here. So if we look at the table, 9 degrees of freedom is right here. And um, we're looking for 3.16. Well, 3.16 cannot be found exactly, but it's between those two areas right here. I mean, sorry, those two t-values right here, 2.821 and 3.250. Since we are looking for a one-tail probability, I will look at the line that says one tail. So here's one tail probability. And 2.821 to 3.250, that brackets our value of 3.16, which means that our probability is somewhere between 1% and half a percent, or between 0 0.005 and 0 0.01. So that's what we have. So we have to write our probability as an inequality. So we don't have an exact value, but we do know it's in between those two values. All right. So I'm just going to put here that that probability answer is between 0 0.005 and 0 0.01 or oh, I should really write that as answer the p the probability of x bar being greater than or equal to 48,000 lies somewhere between it is greater than 0 0.005 but it's less than 0 0.01 okay now if you look at that probability question I'm sure you'll agree that, you know, you know how to do that. Well, guess what? If I now take the same problem and describe it as a hypothesis testing question and said to you, here's what we found. We believe in 2008 that the national average for cafe store managers is $43,000. However, in a random sample of 10 um, cafe managers, we found an average salary of 46,000, and that was Starbucks managers, sorry, and a sample standard deviation of $4,000. Is there sufficient evidence that um, Starbucks managers make a higher salary? And uh, you would go through your five steps. One, tell me what the hypotheses are. Let me see if I could squeeze them in here. All right. So, if you were given that question, you would say, chill. Um, so do um, Starbucks managers make a higher salary? You'd say they don't. So if they don't make a higher salary, then the mean should be 43,000 
or less. But if they do make a higher salary, your alternate hypothesis should be that the mean is greater than 43,000. All right? So that's step one. Step two, you give me a test statistic. Well, given that the sample size is small and sigma is unknown, and we're trying to do a hypothesis test for the population mean, you would give me x bar minus mu s over root n. So as you can see, we're doing all the same things here that we would do when we did the chapter on sampling, <coughs> sampling distributions and calculating probabilities. Three, now we will need a decision rule. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do the classical approach. I'm just going to say that alpha is equal to 5%, the significance level. So the decision rule is just simply if the p-value is less than alpha reject HL. Okay? And alpha in this case is 5%. So the p-value is less than that. Well, what's the fourth step? The fourth step is to calculate t is equal to x bar minus mu s over root n. But we already have that. 316. 3.16. That's our step four. What's the p-value? Well, guess what? We've already calculated it up there value is between 0 0.005 and 0 0.01. Now step five, the decision conclusion. Well, because the p-value is obviously smaller than 5%, because you see it's less than 1%, but greater than half a percent. So we would reject HO, what would we conclude? Our conclusion would be Starbucks managers uh, oh, sorry. make a higher average salary all right and then of course the probability of um, committing type 1 error is not the 5% that we set the 5% is just a limit to tell us when we have enough evidence to uh, reject the null hypothesis okay the default claim and uh, so the actual risk of committing type 1 error is between half a percent and one percent and because that is less in other words less risk than the five percent that we set ourselves we it is okay for us to go ahead and reject the null hypothesis so i'm just showing you here that if you know how to calculate a probability involving a sampling distribution you know how to find a p-value I've, I've actually said that a few times and i think it's People are separating what we've done in chapter six, I believe it was, or chapter seven on sampling distributions from what we're doing in hypothesis testing. Remember, hypothesis testing requires that we take a sample to measure the evidence. So if we're taking samples, then we will be dealing with sampling distributions. And so if you know how to calculate a probability uh, either using the normal or the t distribution, um, then here you go, you know how to do it. All you're now doing it is within the confines or within the context of a hypothesis test. So try not to separate those two things. They, all you're doing is taking what you did in chapter 7, and if you haven't reviewed chapter 7, I strongly suggest that you do, and um, you're using it in hypothesis testing. So hopefully, this actually helps. Now, this is was just a one-tailed test. I'm going to do a short video now for two-tailed tests.